Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Most Lewis. Really excited to be here at the Catalina Jazz Festival with none the less than Donna G, one of the greatest saxophonists, multi instrumentalists multi award winning artists on the planet. <laughs> That's you. Well, I paid man. you well to say <laughs> exactly. that, didn't I? <laughs> I every day. All right, brother. I want to pull back the clock of time and talk about something from New York. Oh, yeah, okay. Did Elmhurst. Oh, wow. How. Okay. Queens like sewed into your life. Sure. Maybe just one story of, of somebody or something you saw when you were growing up there that really inspired you. Well, you know, I don't know if I can limit it to one story. There, there, there are really so many. I mean, uh, growing up in that neighborhood in Queens, I mean, the neighborhood was just filled with great musicians. We moved there when I was 11 from Manhattan. Right. And uh, once I started junior high school, I was exposed to so much in the community. Sure. Uh, so, you know, just playing and you know, knowing people like Tom Brown, Bernard Wright, uh, Denzel Miller, uh, Donald Blackman, Barry Johnson. I mean, they're, they're local names. Omar Hakeem, Marcus Miller. We all grew up at the same time. And so, yeah. 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 So I talked about, because I'm from there, so 30 years I lived there. Uh -huh. Just commuting to school, because you went to school yeah. up in the Bronx. A lot of people don't know that's not across the street. Yeah, well, I, I went to high school at August Martin High School in right. Queens, but my first year of college... Right. I went to Bronx Community College in the music department there. Sure. Stayed there for a year before I went on to audition for New England Conservatory of Music in right. Boston. Yeah, but Absolutely. but yeah, I lived in the Bronx for a while for about two years, I think. Uh, I had an apartment up there in the South Bronx. <laughs> yeah. It's so important for artists to be you really well studied, and you mentioned the conservatory. That's not something that typically uh, kept in Queens or yeah. in New York. What was that pathway like, and and how important it is to be well versed in well, history? It, it's, it's important to be well versed, but in today's times, I don't think you need to go to a conservatory or you know, there's so much information available now, particularly with YouTube and great just being exposed to, around great musicians is probably the greatest school sure. I think a young musician can have. You know, but you're right, being well rounded is important. I think that's been the one thing that I've been benefited from. You know, being able to read music. You know, when called upon to step into any situation and not feel like you didn't belong, you know, you know, playing straight ahead jazz as well as RV and all that. Oh, absolutely. You mentioned so many greats and have been an inspiration to you. Yeah. Tell us about why old trade is so important, even today for us to still have an appreciation. Sure. Well, you know, he changed the culture of jazz for his time because he came along the time when what we call the mobile jazz system began to develop. You know, we went from the bebop era with Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and those people, but then there was the modal era, which involved uh, Miles Davis, you know, with young Herbie Hancock and Tony Williams, and then uh, John Coltrane, who really elevated that whole thing, incorporating other elements of music that took it to a whole nother, you know, changed the game, basically, yeah, so. Even though I'm based in Subtle, uh, maybe about 15 years ago, I saw my first performance with you, uh -huh. and um, you would always come to the audience, and you still do. Tell us about how you sort of advanced the game, in part by, by relating and uh, touching and being out there with the people. Well, I, you know, I come from a background of uh, growing up in New York City, playing in the local bands. Right. And as a matter of fact, a friend and I were talking earlier today, we didn't feel we did a job unless we got the people dancing, you know? So, you know, that was part of why you were there, to get the people to have a good time. So simply just translating that to what I do today is still in me, you know? Uh, because it's more than just being able to listen to music. You gotta create an experience that people wanna come back. You know, they talk about what you did and they already tell others and then, you know, oh, you gotta go see that Najee show, you know? It's a little different. You know? Right. Absolutely. You work with so many greats. Um, and how does that creative process go? Oh, it seems like there's so much variability to it. Maybe sometimes the music chorus, maybe sometimes the lyrics being coming there. Yeah. Uh, when you just sort of get inspiration, can you pretty much get it anywhere from uh, the shower to the bathroom? <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. But you know, I, I find that collaborating with people is my best inspiration. Sure. You know, I like young writers, or not necessarily young, but great writers who can come up with good ideas that I can build on, you know, and working collaborations with different artists always is a win, you know, I mean, well, I, I was looking at my catalog the other day and I didn't realize how many people I've worked with on my own records. I mean, from Vesta to Jeffrey Osborne, George Duke, Marcus Miller, you know, Freddie Jackson, uh, Eric Benet, Eric Robeson, and the list just goes on and on and on, you know, so, yeah. And on that note, you really find it important to mentor someone to say to young oh. upcoming artists. Tell us about how that's so necessary today. Well, you know, it, it seems to me um, 
that it's a natural thing uh, for me because that's how it was for me coming up. I mean, I had the, the great pleasure of studying with the legendary Jimmy Heath, Frank Fawcett, Jazzmobile, under um, Billy Taylor, the late Billy Taylor. Uh, so for me, uh, I'm working with two artists who, who released albums that are doing very well, not albums, but singles, uh, Ellis Hamilton and Riley Richard. Yeah, the two of them, and they're doing very well at radio now, so. Absolutely. Our show is called Music and Medicine, right? When you hear those words, considering all these years that we sold into our lives, given your music as medicine, yeah. how does it speak to you? Well, I think music is medicine. I know it has been for me, and I hear about the same thing, too. I mean, I remember as a kid listening to Earth, Wind & Wire outfit ever, and I loved it. Up to that, and even Al Jerome in his early years, I mean, there were so many people like this in back here. Uh, and for me, it pickled some sense of sanity, but it also inspired me to want to, to, want to be in the sure. game and rest by, by, by skill. Uh, I want to talk about one of those inspirations, your mother. Uh, oh, yeah. How important and just that influence in, in buying you a clarinet. Yes. Well, you know, I started clarinet in high school. I mean, uh, junior high school. Right, right. Yeah, junior high school. Yeah. And I switched to saxophone. Right. And I used to come home with the school instruments every day. Everybody would bug out in the house. But uh, she one day seen it, saw that I was very serious, and she purchased her first outfield saxophone. And that opened up a whole nother world. Sure. And you mentioned your catalog. One of the things that comes across is all the work you've done with your brother. Talk to us yeah. about that relationship. Yes. So rare, huh? Uh, well, he's been half of my success. Yeah. Honestly, because we came up in the local bands in Queens, a right. part of the community. And since that time, we went to school together. And uh, he's always been a part of the business aspect of what I do, as well as recording some of my most famous albums. He was a producer on, like, Tokyo Blue. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't think we would have gotten this far without his involvement, honestly. Sure, absolutely. And then, finally, tell us about just sort of uh, the inspiration that you hope people take away as they listen to music and feel the passion that you always yeah. communicate. Yeah, I hope, I hope we uh, you know, pro provide an experience or release, you know, like today playing Harry Catalina. Sure. It's a great environment, as you can see. Yeah. Um, you know, that they walk away with the feeling like we had a play time. You know? okay. Jazz is not dead. You know? <laughs> exactly. And it can be a lot sure. of fun. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Uh, and it's not just for the older people. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just words of wisdom that you might leave for some young artists who's coming up. It's a complicated business. It's a very diverse and complicated landscape even today. Well, I would say two things. One is to first establish your voice, whatever that is. Sure. You know, there's a, there's a saying that, uh, Imitation, is, uh, uh, envy is ignorance, imitation is suicide. So I always say, find your own voice and do what you do best. So you know, we'll try to be somebody else. If we learn from other people after, but you know, try to be somebody else, that job is already taken. Right, sure. Just be you, you know? Sure. And find a way to market that aspect of yourself. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, well, you've done an amazing job. And I know it hasn't been easy, but oh. we've been the beneficiaries of all the years of hard work and the wonderful music. Oh, so you, we thank you so much. Show thank show you. I'm oh. Absolutely, sure. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Have you ever known that feeling? Ooh, that special.